I wasn't that big of a fan of his match with Vince, to be honest with you. I loved Bret Hart coming back to the WWE. That was very surreal when he showed up on Monday Night Raw and confronted Shawn Michaels. And the way he had mended fences with the company and coming back to do one final storyline, one final angle, and he would actually be getting in the ring and competing at WrestleMania. For someone like me who loves Bret Hart and hated the way he left, to see Bret Hart back in a WWE ring, you think I would be coming in my pants. But I really wasn't. Bret was not the same. He was a shell of himself. He had gotten older. He had had health problems, the stroke. You know, he aged quickly after he retired. And, of course, he also had all these insurance obligations where, you know, he couldn't even get physical. He couldn't even take any bumps. So every time he appeared in WWE and actually got physical, he even won the U.S. title, remember? He never took any bumps. It just didn't feel the same. You know, not that I'm upset with Brett for protecting himself. I don't want him to get hurt or anything. It's just, I don't know, something about it. It felt almost forced. It felt like it was Vince McMahon's way of apologizing to Bret Hart for everything that happened between them. And he said, why don't you go out there on WrestleMania on our biggest stage and humiliate the hell out of me? And Vince was always more than willing to do that. He had done it with Shawn Michaels a couple of years before, and of course he did it with Hulk Hogan a couple of years before that. So you had Brett, Shawn, and Hogan all working with Vince at WrestleMania, and you knew this was going to be a complete squash. Now, the build to this match I actually liked a lot better than the match itself because the build was fun. Once Brett came back and mended fences with Shawn and kind of moved on and started that feud with Vince, uh, I really like when he fooled Vince when he got his car or when he got his leg injured in that, what was that, car accident or something backstage where uh, they slammed the door, the car backed in on his leg accidentally. John Cena was back there for that. He had befriended Brett. The two of them had become pretty tight on television. And the whole thing turns out to be a setup. Bret Hart has now this broken leg. He's out there on crutches. And that's when Vince McMahon decides to accept the match at WrestleMania. And then he starts making all these other stipulations like it's a no-holds-barred match and all of that. And then in one of my favorite Raw segments ever was the contract signing. I think Stone Cold Steve Austin was like a moderator for it or something, which was really cool to see Stone Cold and Bret Hart in a WWE ring on Monday Night Raw. It had been many, many, many years since we had ever seen that. And then Bret reveals the whole thing to be a big ruse once Vince McMahon signs the contract and he's as confident as ever because he's going into WrestleMania against a one-legged man. Bret Hart pulls off the cast and sets it on the table and Vince sees it and it becomes apparent that he just fucked up big time. And Bret Hart is 100% healthy and was never injured to begin with, and now he's set Vince up to have this big no-holds-barred match at WrestleMania where Bret Hart can get his ultimate revenge. And that's pretty much what happened. Vince, you know, he tried to pull a, a fast one on Bret by claiming that he had purchased all the Hart family members. When he's uh, making his entrance, he announces that all the Hart family members that were there to honor Stu Hart, who was inducted into the Hall of Fame the night before, they were going to be in Vince's corner. He had paid them all off and purchased the family, only to find out that Bret Hart had fooled him once again, and then Bret Hart gets on the mic and explains that the family is actually there for him, and they are going to screw Vince McMahon the same way that he screwed Bret back in 1997. Bret Hart has Vince McMahon inside the ring in an anything-goes match, and the entire Hart family is surrounding the ring so Vince McMahon can't get away. That in itself in the storyline is pretty cool. You know, Vince is finally going to pay for his sins, you know, that's a pretty ultimate way to pay for him there uh, with the entire Hart family, getting him back for some of the wrongs that he has done to them. And it uh, d definitely tied in some uh, real-life stuff as well. Of course, they never mentioned Owen, you know, but there was also some bad blood with that, too. I mean, all those people on the outside of the ring, some of them were involved in that lawsuit with the WWE and the wrongful death of Owen Hart. So the way the WWE set all this up and the setting for it was all fine and good, but the match in the ring, come on. Vince McMahon and a very, very old Bret Hart who can't even take any bumps – what were we really going to see here? Bret Hart just kind of methodically tears Vince apart throughout the match, lays into him with the steel chair, and finally locks in the sharpshooter, and Vince taps out. And the entire Hart family celebrated in the ring for the first time since that uh, Canadian stampede in your house all those years ago. So that was a nice moment, I think. But, you know, the overall match, the way it all came off, I don't know, just a little, uh, it, it fell a little bit flat. 